Albert John Lefouli, South Africa, won the Nobel Peace Prize, a deeply committed Christian man. He, had actually, he was actually, though, South, native South African, uh, black South African, was in fact a child of Seventh-day Adventist missionaries. But through a whole series of circumstances, he was eventually confirmed and commissioned as a lay preacher. And it was in this context of his being commissioned as a lay preacher, particularly with the sort of edge into evangelism, that Albert John Lothuli became came face to face with if he was going to minister the gospel to the people in his communities. He had to care about their circumstances as much as their souls. And out of that, he became an extraordinary witness for which he won the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, struggling against apartheid in South Africa. I think about him and wanted to hold up him because while it's deep within our tradition to care about people's circumstances, and see that is critically important to the ministry that God has given us. For some reason, parts of our church have entered into what I could only describe as the spirit of quietism, where the default mode becomes pastoral care to the people who show up. But that's really not who we are in terms of our tradition, which is why we give thanks for people like Albert John Lothuli. We instead understand that unlike some traditions that see, have a kind of um, almost ghetto mentality. You know, the world is wicked and evil out there and our job is to take care of the people who show up and who are we? We're like a lifeboat. And what we do is take care of the people who come and we have very little to do with what's going on out there unless it has a direct impact on our community, on our people, meaning our parishioners, meaning literally the people who show up. Jettison, in fact, the idea of parish. To serve in a parish means, in our classical understanding, is that God has planted our church in the context of a community where we are called to be salt and light. And to minister to our parish means we minister to the people who come and use that, in essence, as a kind of organizing springboard to begin to minister into the community from which these people come. Because it is the community that is our geographic parish, not just our parishioners. And to minister to parishioners only and not think about our, con our calling by God. In other words, why did God plant us here as to over there? And what does he want to do about what's going on here in the context of our community? In essence, consigns ourselves to actually a truncated gospel. That's why I got involved, as I did, with, in the aftermath of the shootings at the Pulse nightclub. That's why I got involved in the shooting of Trayvon Martin down in Sanford. Because that's my parish as bishop, you see. And not just because it's local, since, since my parish is 15 counties and 86 congregations. Uh, if something like that were to happen, in a way that really had a significant impact on the community as a whole, I'd be calling the rector up, which is exactly what I did in the Trayvon Martin shooting. The first thing I did was call the rector of Holy Cross Sanford and say, tell me what's going on down there. The same with this. I connected very quickly with the dean of the cathedral, Reagan Kidd, and within a matter of just really hours, Things began to happen, a statement got issued, and it took off. I see that, quite frankly, as appropriate to gospel ministry. Because God loves the world. 
just as much as God loves the Christians who show up in a local church on a Sunday morning. And not only that, we are meant to be a kind of witness to the vibrancy of the Christian life in a way that heals the divisions that presently deeply challenge our community. That's the message of the book of Ephesians, where the writer so eloquently says that what has God done in Christ Jesus? For he is our peace, breaking down the dividing walls of hostility that divide us, abolishing the law with its commands that he might create, not this group and that group, but literally one new humanity in the place of two, thus making peace that he might reconcile both groups to God into one body through the cross. <clears throat> you can't get more explicit than that. And that as we, within the context of the church, are learning how to work out our differences around things like race and generational divisions and economic differences, we are meant to be able to wrestle within those things within the context of the church because we're sisters and brothers in Jesus, which means there's more that unites us than divides us. And that gives us the playing field to be able to have those kinds of conversations and to model something new and different in terms of relationships that we might, out of that common witness, be the city on the hill, the salt of the earth to which we have called us and to demonstrate that in a kind of sacrificial servanthood. If I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also should wash others, one another's feet, to demonstrate that in significant ways, in a way that causes the world to take notice. That's really the invitation. That is the witness of Lothuli's life. And it isn't as if we don't have things in our community to, with which to wrestle. I mean, for crying out loud, take your pick. Whether, <laughs> whether you're talking about the hookup culture that's so much a part of our retirement communities. Whether you're talking about that we're one of the hotbeds for cocaine sales. Again, among mostly well-to-do retirees or whether you're talking about the drug culture that's going on in the surfing communities on the coast, or whether you're talking about the continual racism that we continue to wrestle with even down into our hiring policies, where, as I heard briefly, no, we're not going to hire this particular person who was uh, Latino because he doesn't fit the culture of our community. If that's not racism, I don't know what it is. So it's not as if we need to be sort of pointing out there. But it begins and is meant to, be, to begin within the conversation of sisters and brothers to say, we have already, because of what God has given us in Christ Jesus, a foundation of mercy, a foundation of forgiveness, a foundation of generosity and kindness, because that's what we have received in Jesus. And that's what we're learning how to live out with one another that allows us to begin to wrestle with some of these things as a part of our gospel initiative. Unless who we really are meant to be, our kind of pious quietness that says God really cares about the soul and not much else. But that actually is a profound betrayal of our tradition. It's not who we are. And... More importantly than that, it's not what the scripture teaches. Something very, very different indeed. I do get, why did you do that? <laughs> Some of the things that I find myself involved in. But it has everything to do with my understanding about the role of the Christian in the world. We have a kind of inner confidence, you see, that God has given us. We have the promise of eternal life. We've been forgiven of our sins. And there is a profound freedom in that that allows us to enter into places of difficulty with a level, you've heard me use these words before, of poise and of courage and of security 
that we should be using, in fact, in a way that serves the world. Because that is, in fact, who Jesus was in the world and who he has called us to be as his body in the world. If I'm still trying to think about how Jesus can take care of me, I, I'm still in the playpen. But if I begin to understand that he is in fact taking care of me, and therefore my job is to go and care, then I, I'm out of the playpen. And I'm beginning to display some mark of Christian maturity. Because that is my understanding of what Christian maturity is. A switch of focus from my neediness to my service. I'm always needy, but the good news is, is that God promises to take care of my needs. So I'm free to serve. Anything else is a trap of worry and fear. It really does look like the bars of a plane. So in giving thanks for people like Albert, John, we must ask ourselves, okay, God, where in my community or my parishes do you want me to make a difference? Give me eyes to see. I promise you, he will. Amen. Amen. Amen.